I was editing our promo for Honey last week, and I was cutting out Jessica Alba, the front cover, where she's, like, you know, on the front. I was editing that, and Jenny walked down the stairs, and I closed it. I'm like, it's not porn. I don't know what's going through my brain. Like, I'm an adult man. Just, no, no, don't look. And always remember, spoiler alert. Welcome back to Same But Different, the movie talk show that nobody asked for, but we're doing it anyway. I'm here with Brody. That's me. I'm Brody. Hey, welcome back. Hell, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for welcoming me back to our show. I'm yeah. doing well. How are you? I'm here with Derek. How you doing, Derek? This week's movie was the movie Dick, starring Kirsten Dunst and Michelle Williams. It's the first week of Pride Month. This movie was thrown into the hat and it was chosen because of the director, who's an openly gay man. It was funny <laughs> pulling that out of the hat. I pulled a, I pulled Dick out of a hat. If you like movies... If you like reviews, if you like everything entertainment, and you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, because we're going to keep pumping out this content, whether you like it or not. <laughs> Golly gee, I like all that stuff, Derek. Oh, well, you know what you got to do? What should I do? Everything I just said. Holy shit. <laughs> Golly gee, holy shit. <laughs> what Imagine the in fuck? the 60s, like, <laughs> leave yeah. it to Beaver. Holy shit, Wally. Let's review Dick. 1999. After you, sir. All right, let's talk Dick. Honestly, I this movie was so much fun. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Derek and I, we never discuss, as you know. I have no idea. He might have hated this. He might. I I enjoyed myself. This movie was so fun. Even though the movie took place in the 70s, this felt like such a prime slice of life of the late 90s. Like it was mm. just so so many little references and music and things that just brought me back to being like eight years old. And I'm sure people who lived through the Watergate scandal had a lot more to say about the references. I feel like the only time I ever enjoy political-based movies is if it's satire or comedies. Do you mm -hmm. agree with me there? Like, I, I'm not going to sit down and watch All the President's Men, which is the same right. plot as this movie, really, but like a drama. It depends, because I've seen a couple of political thrillers that are really well done. And like, even though it's just conversation after conversation, it can be edge-of-your-seat stuff. Whenever I watch a political movie, it has to introduce me to the world every single time doesn't matter if i've watched a movie about politics and then i watch the next movie about politics it better introduce me again because i've lost whatever i watched yeah that's fair <laughs> you know that's what i mean fair. it's gotta be very open and welcoming for the layman audience in regards to pol uh, political movies because otherwise i'm out so the script of this movie was honestly so intelligent it was so smart and like i just feel like it didn't need that added layer of fun my favorite bit um when they said they have to go to the west wing of the white house and then for the next two minutes when they were there it was edited like an episode of the west wing with the walk and talks and how like they were thrown off by everyone walking and it was really funny how did and you even catch that because i watched the way i watched season one of the west wing um, and we studied walk and talks when i was in uh when i went to school for acting so i knew that the way they explained the 18-minute gap in the Nixon tapes was brilliant. They created world peace with pot cookies. Like, there was just so much <laughs> clever ignorance in this movie that I was I was yeah. just consistently surprised. Honestly, like, obviously this was a fictional piece of whatever, but, like, if you were to tell me this is what actually happened and there were, they, like, it felt real. Like, they tied up every mm -hmm. loose end. Like, this could have been what happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I think that knowing... Kirsten Dunst and Michelle Williams added to me appreciating their performance. I think if I saw this in 99, I wouldn't have appreciated them as much because I just would have assumed that's how they are as actors. But now knowing that they are nothing like that in real life or in their other roles, it was all the more impressive to see them play these characters because they crushed it. Their chemistry was so fun and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Richard Nixon. I mean, I know that guy, Dan something or other. I've seen him around. Mm -hmm. I know him from other mm -hmm. stuff. But if I didn't, I would have sworn they just dug up Richard Nixon and reanimated him. Cause it no was, way. It was perfect. The first thing we did was look up photos of Nixon and compare the two faces. And they they look, there's similarities, but no. Oh, I <laughs> beg to differ. He, I can't do a Nixon impression. He perfectly impersonated him. I'm, yeah. I'm going to give him that. <laughs> 
fun fact, it like Will Ferrell, this was this is what launched Will Ferrell's approach to his comedy, I think. Because I looked him up and he wasn't really in too much before this. It felt like the beginning of his co- exploration into comedy. Like that mm-hmm. that was like a, the foundation for the how he is now as an actor. It was kind of cool to see. Would have thought the dick jokes would have gotten stale and somehow it made me laugh every time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. Like the first time they dropped it, uh, it was it was clever and it was funny and we were kind of waiting for it. But then they just kept making those like, I love Dick. They just kept making me laugh because I'm a child. Overall, I really liked a a lot of this movie. I had fun with it. I thought it was so much smarter than it really needed to be. I will say a couple bad things. I think what bothers me the most about this movie has nothing to do with the movie, but Mm. how it's advertised, how it was advertised being the title and the front, like the movie's poster kind of yeah. advertise it as this raunchy, sexy comedy, and it's mm-hmm. misleading for the actual content of this. It almost does it itself an in, in, sur, un, in service, disservice. Before you told me the description last week, I was totally under the impression that this was going to be like some soft core, not really porno, like but Like an you know American what I mean? like, Pie or whatever, yeah. Or like Girl Next Door or something sure. like that. Yeah. Yep, and that's kind of what I always assumed seeing this uh, at Blockbuster shelves and stuff. Well, the soundtrack was cool. The soundtrack had some great songs in there. The soundtrack editing seemed really wonky. I feel okay. like they played it at really low volumes over really important scenes instead of like loudly as a method of transporting from one scene to the next, which is what soundtracks are kind of for. It just felt wrong. I don't know. I was something about the soundtrack that rubbed me the wrong way. I also got very uncomfortable watching Ryan Reynolds and Kirsten Dunst make out because she was like 16 and he was like 24. Oh, um, and oopsies. Yeah, I, I, I looked into that because I'm like, there's this is this. Uh, I was ugh, ugh, it was a little weird. That all being said, I don't have too much negative to say. I enjoyed this movie and I genuinely do think it is a good one. Why I think it's so good is mostly due to surprise and almost like a, a just appreciation for what they attempted and, and succeeded at doing here. So it's not an astounding movie, but because I enjoyed myself and I think it's good, I'm going to give it a seven. I pretty much agree with most of the good things that you've said. Performances were fine. I just had to take it at face value as like, it's just riding the coattail success of things like, you know, Dumb and Dumber or anything Jim Carrey that came out in the mid to late Oh, interesting. I thought for sure you were going to say like Clueless or something. Wasn't quite Clueless for me. It didn't feel like a high school movie. It felt more of a fish out of water movie, kind of, to be honest. They were thrown into a situation that they just were not equipped to handle, but they did it the best way and the only way they knew how. (laughs) Yeah, Um, right. I see that. But yeah, it it felt like a a Farley brother movie or Farley brother or how Mm. you pronounce it. Farley? Is it Farley? Uh, Yep. There are some things I didn't like about the movie. I want to hear because I genuinely was looking for things I didn't like. As much as I've seen movies about this Watergate conspiracy or scandal or whatever the heck it was i don't know what it is at all and i think if you knew what it was for this movie you would enjoy the movie a lot more i didn't i don't know the details so i was i was depending on this movie to give me the details and it did to some extent but for the most part of the movie the political part of it i was kind of lost that's on me to educate myself a little bit more that has nothing i'm not going to dock marks on this movie for that i just didn't enjoy it as much as i could have if i fully understood what the premise of the movie was about to its advantage i was much like these girls because i had no idea what was going on (laughs) the biggest detriment uh this movie had was the fact that it was too i don't know if it was editing or it was just poor pacing but it was very fast especially in the beginning i don't think it was until about halfway through the movie where i was really hooked i guess it was like bang 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 no scene lasted longer than like two minutes it was just so fast and and squished together at the beginning that the pacing was all off by the time we reached the middle i was like how did we get here i think because of that first little bit it didn't let itself breathe enough life into these two characters personally their chemistry was amazing their jokes and their dim-wittedness was incredible and added to the humor of the movie especially in a in a serious scenario like the contrast between the two is always it's always comedy i'm talking about the character specifically i know comedies like this rarely do this but when comedies do do this it it. becomes a high (laughs) it becomes a (laughs) you and your dick jokes and poo jokes it becomes a higher tier comedy when you can actually like give some character 
growth and backstory and substance. The one thing I do appreciate is the they leaned into the brother sister relationship between Kirsten Dunst and her brother and like the sort of rivalry they had and she's kind of she was kind of happy he was got drafted. Yeah, it was kind of but funny. it was like yeah, it was a love rivalry. There was love there. It was not pure yes. hatred, which was interesting. They did honestly, that's what I mean. They wrote this movie well. Yeah, I just wish there was a little bit more to it. Um or maybe like a little bit more stakes on the line for these two girls if something bad were to happen or someone were to find out. It just seemed like no matter what, they had this plot armor that like nothing bad or no conflict between them ever. I feel as though that's a part of the satire of this movie is that these two ditzy girls are literally invincible against the U.S. government. <laughs> I think that's kind of the point, but I also understand why you would want to see that. But make them not invincible to something else. Make them not invincible to their high school grades or, you know, getting suspended or something like that, you know, okay. like some sort of like strain or strenuous situation on their and personal lives that would feed into the main plot of the story. Yes, all the dick jokes were hilarious. I think the dick jokes worked because they weren't trying to make lewd innuendo dick jokes. I think they were using Dick Lucy Goosey as a short form for Richard Nixon, and it was never pushed so far into lewd and crude and sexual. It was always just like, oh, I hate Dick now. And yeah. it's just, you yourself make that connection, right? Even to the point with the end where it was, you suck, comma, pause, Dick. They yeah. even made a point to make you know they weren't saying you suck, Dick. They're saying you suck, Dick. It was interesting. Exactly. Yeah. That that ending made me smile very It was much, so good. I gave it very close to your rating um 6.5 for me there you have it he loves dick <laughs> can we also just say real quick before we move on super duper quick dave foley uh, killed it as always oh. i love dave foley canada pride the man is a genius and he killed it as always if you've seen dick the 1999 movie <laughs> please let us know in the comments below what you thought about it let's get into our top five movies this week and just going off the theme of these, what did I call them? Dim-witted lead characters. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do our top five airhead characters from movies. Top five dim-witted characters in movies: airheads, dummies, bozos, whatever you want to call them. Number five, Garth from Wayne's World. Oh wow, that's a good one. Number four, we have Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. <laughs> Okay. I still to this day and nobody ever understands what I'm saying is make like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> I, I say it all the time so much. And people just think I'm an idiot. Number three, we have Frank Drebin, I think is how you pronounce his last name, from Naked Gun. Leslie Nielsen is always the same character in Naked Gun Airplane, <laughs> even as far up as like the superhero movie that he was in. Number two, Lloyd Christmas, Dumb and Dumber. Ooh, it was you made two? Okay, okay. It was tough to decide between Harry and Lloyd. It was, because I love them both for different reasons at different times. Numero uno, my favorite I airhead. I, I think I know. Guess. I'm going to say Bill S. Preston. Theodore Logan. Oh, the other one. The other one. You were so. You thought I'd choose Alex Winter over Keanu Reeves? Yeah, because okay. you're, just, you're just like that. You're, I, the, I, you're the hipster. Fair. My honorable mentions, one is very on the nose, and it's Chaz from Airheads, Brendan Fraser. The other honorable mention is Madison from Zombieland Double Tap. Uh, oh, Zoe Dutch. good um, call. She is the highlight of that movie, and she mm -hmm. is so funny and constitutes mm -hmm. Airhead Bozo Dumb Idiot. So Here are my top five Airhead Dummy Bozos Dimwitted characters. Number five, Jess and Chester from Dude Wears My Car. Okay, wow. See, I didn't even remember their <laughs> names. Number four, replacing what is now my honorable mention, Wayne and Garth. Oh, okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. So, so far you have four on your top five. <laughs> Shut up, man. Let me, let me get through this. Number three, Chad, Brad Pitt's character from Burn After Reading. Oh, shit. Number two, we have Bill and Ted. Okay. It's Bill and Ted. And the consistency across all now three movies with these characters. Number one, you already know what it is. Lloyd Christmas, Harry Dunn from Dumb and Dumber. The legends. Do you mean Lloyd and Harry from Dumb and Dumber? -er? Although fantastic impressions of the characters. True. No, 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 no. <laughs> and also a movie that could, ex it was funny and it could only exist for like one small month in time. <laughs> and then yeah. and then immediately became horrible. I don't it's it's bizarre. 
it we can get into that it's just weird how things like that can be lost to time and then stuff like it's always sunny in philadelphia can just hilarious until the end of time it is interesting i i I don't know where the line is or how to tow it or who gets to but i just shut up and either laugh or grow and my one honorable mention i have here is steve carell's performance in anchorman brick tamland so that that's it for our top fives this week what are your top five airhead dummy bozos dim-witted uh characters from movies let us know in the comments below we've missed a bunch i'm sure so now that we're done with our top five let's move on and find out what we're going to watch next week that sound can only mean <laughs> the hat of destiny <laughs> as a reminder this month is pride month and all the movies in the hat this month are movies that are created by or they star members of the lgbtq plus community <laughs> short bus a group of new yorkers caught up in the romantic sexual milieu converge at an underground salon infamous for its blend of art music politics and carnality and it is directed by the person who played uh hedwig in hedwig and the angry inch which we reviewed on this show it just seems very sexy a lot of nudity a lot of like actual seeing it unsimulated sex i'm just gonna read the top trivia right now you can choose to put this in or not to make the actors more comfortable the director and the cameraman also stripped naked while filming the orgy scene beautiful love it can't wait this is perfect uh huh. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Mm. Cool. 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 I'm gonna have to watch that one when no one's home. Short bus. Watch it for next week. Come back here. Listen to us talk about it, and also live your life. Do that too. Do that first. No, no, no. We take priority here. We okay, take priority. Okay. Do what we ask, and then the stuff you like. And if the stuff you like has anything to do with this show, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, and we will see you here. Next week, during our shorts, during our news on Wednesdays, Brody, it's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure, sir. As always, thank you all so, so very much. Thank you, Derek, for, you know, doing this with me. And uh, it's been a blast, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Well, I beg to differ.